What's going on guys? This is the fourth attempt at the introduction. Hopefully this one works. Today you and I are talking about reverse dieting, specifically how you can use reverse dieting to lose fat. Now, first and foremost, Rico is behind the camera. Thank you, Rico, for all of your hard work. We love you, Rico. Give the video a thumbs up if you love Rico just as much as I do. In this video, we're gonna talk to you about, number one, what is reverse dieting? Number two, how does reverse dieting work? Number three, who is it for? Number four, how you can structure your own reverse dieting protocol. Before we get into the chocolate frogs and the pumpkin pasties and the sugar quills and the pumpkin juice and all the butter beer, let's just start with a quick story. A story about Horace Slughorn and Dobby the house elf, okay? These two both are the perfect candidate to use reverse dieting and I want to explain why starting with Dobby the house elf. What a wonderful, wonderful house elf. When Harry freed Dobby by giving him the sock at the end of the second book, one of my top three favorite moments in all of the Harry Potter series. Dobby, he's very small, very petite. He doesn't really have much body fat on him. We could compare Dobby to a very lean athletic individual. They're already relatively low body fat. They've been training for a long time, but they want to lose some more stubborn fat. That's where Dobby is. The issue is their calories are already very low and they don't want to go any lower, especially because Dobby, he's tiny. You know, you could just imagine, like, Harry, I'm already eating so few calories. Don't want to reduce them anymore, Harry Potter. What to do? And you can sort of feel the struggle he's going through because however many calories he's eating, you don't want to keep reducing them. That's next to nothing. At this point, reverse dieting would be a really good option for Dobby and anyone who's in a similar situation. Let's look at Horace Slughorn. I harbor a little bit of ill feelings towards him because he did tell Tom Riddle about Horcruxes, but it all worked out in the end, right? Horace Slughorn, he's a little bit heftier. He's a bigger guy, right? He has a lot more to lose. And apparently, he was telling Minerva McGonagall he wanted to lose some weight. So what did he do? He went on a calorie deficit over a period of time and he was losing and losing and losing. What happened was, after a certain amount of time, after he lost a considerable amount of weight, just mentally, he wasn't in it anymore. He needed a break. His weight wasn't going down as much. He didn't want to reduce calories any further and he needed time away from a calorie deficit. So this situation is also perfect for reverse dieting. So now that we understand who reverse dieting is good for, let's go to Dumbledore. Dumbledore defined reverse dieting the best. What Dumbledore said in Hogwarts A History, Bethilda Bagshaw wrote and quoted Dumbledore as saying, reverse dieting is strategically increasing your calories in order to improve your body composition. That's all it is. And we're gonna get deeper in that, okay? Dumbledore went on to talk about more. We're gonna discuss it more in depth, so stay with me. Professor Flitwick has some inter interesting things to say about reverse dieting, and he's a charmer, pun intended. If you get that pun, you are a true Harry Potter fan and I fucking love you. If you get that pun, tell me in the comment section that you got that. He's a real charmer. And Professor Flitwick standing atop all of his books and charms class, he spoke about reverse dieting. And a lot of students were questioning whether or not it worked. And he said, it does work, it absolutely works. But remember, it's not magic. Muggles can use it too. It's not a wave of a wand, it's not a magic pill or a potion. It's a very simple strategic way for muggles and squibs and witches and wizards to improve their body composition. Now, Luna Lovegood, she wanted to expand on that. She wanted to talk about, okay, yes, reverse dieting works, and yes, it's not magical, but what is the biggest myth associated with reverse dieting? What do people believe that isn't truly accurate? And you need to understand this because if you don't, you won't actually understand why reverse dieting works. A lot of proponents of reverse dieting, they'll say, I must have been in starvation mode because I wasn't eating enough calories and as soon as I increased my calorie intake, I lost weight. On the surface, and logically you'd think, well, that makes sense. You must have been in starvation mode. Eating too little, increase your calories, and then you lose weight, that must have been it. You increase your metabolism. But let me ask you a question. Let's say, for example, that you weigh in on the scale one day, and the scale spikes up, goes up two, three, four pounds. You know, logically, doesn't mean it's fat gain. Just because the scale went up doesn't mean you're gaining fat. So. If you increase your calories and the scale goes down, logical reasoning stands to say that that doesn't necessarily mean it's fat. Now think about this. If you are in a very steep calorie deficit and you hit a plateau and you're not losing weight and you slightly increase your calories, a lot of times what'll happen is 
you will lose weight because your body is flushing out water. Sometimes when your body is stressed, it will hold on to water so the scale won't budge. So by increasing your calories sometimes, the scale will go down. Also, and this is also very important, let's say for example you're eating 1200 calories and your weight's not going down. Some people might say, you're in starvation mode, you're in starvation mode. Sounds like something Draco Malfoy would say or something like that, you're in starvation mode. Number one, starvation mode doesn't exist and I'll explain why in a second. Let's say you go from 1200 calories and you increase to 1500 calories and then your weight starts going down. Your pants start fitting better. You're able to sustain that 1500 calories better. People might say, oh, increasing your calories is what you need in order to lose fat. But just because you increase your calories doesn't mean you're not still in a calorie deficit. And this is what a lot of people miss. Just because you go from 1200 to 1500 or 1300 to 1700 or whatever the number may be, doesn't mean you're not still in a calorie deficit. And this right here is the magic of reverse dieting. Just because you're increasing your calories doesn't mean that you were in starvation mode. All it means is that you're increasing your calories and odds are you're still in a calorie deficit. So you're still losing fat and also water and you're reducing stress. And let's not forget, you're able to sustain it better. And the more you're able to sustain it, the better off you're gonna do with it. Now, why doesn't starvation mode exist? There are many reasons for this. I actually did an entire episode with Dr. Spencer Nadolsky on this. I'll put the link to that in the description below. And he completely breaks down why it's a myth. But just from logical reasoning perspective, have you ever seen a prisoner of war who was stuck or captured, eating very few calories in a very high stress situation who got fat? You don't see it, it doesn't exist. And a lot of people get really mad. Well, that, that's different, why? Why is it different? People say, oh, well, if you're eating 1200 calories and your stress is really high, then you're gonna be in starvation mode. Your body's gonna hold on to fat. Well, is being in a prisoner of war camp not stressful? Is 400 calories a day, is that not starvation mode, but 1200 calories a day is starvation mode? Like, what is the line? Where are we drawing this line? How do we come to this logical reasoning? Case in point, starvation mode doesn't exist. Reverse dieting works because you're increasing your calories while staying in a calorie deficit so that you can sustain that deficit longer, reduce your stress and continue to lose fat. So now that you know who reverse dieting is for, what it is, if it works and why it works, let's talk about how you can do it, how you can actually set up your own reverse dieting plan. Now what I'm gonna do here is give you an example showing you exactly how you can increase your calories over time to reverse diet effectively, to continue losing fat all the way up until you hit maintenance. A lot of people are gonna wanna know, how do you know how many calories you should be eating to lose fat, right? How do you know what's an appropriate calorie deficit? I have a full on video, the most detailed video I've ever seen linked in the description. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that. Also, if you're liking this video, thumbs up, subscribe because Right now, Dumbledore's looking down and I'm feeling like he's pretty happy with what I'm doing at this point. But anyway, let's say for example, just an example, hypothetical, you're eating 1200 calories. And this is oftentimes what happens with people who are figure competitors, bodybuilding competitors. They're eating very, very, very low calories. This is where they might be at the end of their cut, okay, at the end of their diet. A lot of people, what they essentially wanna do mentally is they wanna stop tracking. Once they get to the very end of their cut, they do this thing where they're like, oh, I'm done. And then they stop counting their calories, they stop tracking, and they just eat a lot. And they gain all their weight back. And it's a huge psychological mind because you just spent however long, eight, 12, 16, 20 plus weeks cutting, getting as lean as you can. And then within two weeks, four weeks, you gain a lot of it, if not most of it, if not more of it back. And the whole point of reverse dieting is to help you do that under control. What you have to remember though, when you finish your cut, that doesn't mean stop tracking. It means you're halfway there. Keep tracking. Because by continuing to track your calories for another eight, 10 weeks, you can maintain your leanness while continuing to lose fat and then build muscle and add more calories back, okay? So if we're looking at this example, what you'll see is on week one, 1200 calories. Week two, 1250. Week three, 1300. Then we jump to 1400, 1450, 1500, 1600, 1650, 1700, week 10, 1800. This is just an example, okay? And the reason I wanted to show this to you is because you'll notice week one, 
To week two, it only jumps 50 calories. It's not much. And a lot of people, the reason they end up screwing the pooch is because they just wanna add more calories back way more quickly and they hate only 50. Ah, oh. and this is why it's so important to lose fat in a sustainable way. Because you don't wanna to get to this point and be like, oh, I'm dying, I need a, someone just about a cadaver me already. You don't want that. You wanna to get to a point where you can sustain it. And so adding 50 calories a week and then adding 100 here and another 50, another 50, another 100 is sustainable and enjoyable because that's how you're gonna sustain this for the long term. And essentially the goal here is to work all the way up until you reach your maintenance. And what will happen if you do this properly is until you reach your maintenance over the course of six, eight, 10 weeks, you'll continue to lose fat because you'll still be in a calorie deficit. The first question that people ask here though, and Ron Weasley asked it actually, is can't you just jump straight from the end of your cut right into maintenance? And you can do that. It's doable and I've seen people, inner circle members, clients, I've seen people do it. The caveat is they're very experienced. Not the first time, not the second time, probably not the third time. They have experience, they are very honed in on knowing what their deficit is gonna be, what their maintenance is, what their surplus is. They have all this dialed in. If, they, if you haven't done it before and you're just guesswork, you have to go through that trial and error in order to know. And the best way to go through the trial and error is to track meticulously. So going from the end of your fat loss phase and trying to jump straight to maintenance, while you can do it, it's a huge guess. And also what'll happen is if you go straight from here all the way to here, your weight will go up way more quickly. And even though we know that weight doesn't necessarily equal fat gain, it can be a huge mind fuck for people. And if you see your weight go up 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds after a cut, be like, oh, what was the point? And then binging happens a lot of times because you, you think that you failed even though you haven't. And that's what perpetuates this bad cycle. So best, and this is what I told Ron Weasley, I said, don't jump to maintenance yet. Do this three, four, five times. Then you can jump to maintenance if you want. You might find over time that you actually enjoy the reverse dieting cycle. Now, what Justin Finch Fletchley wanted to know is how do you know when you've reached maintenance? How do you know if you're there? What is maintenance? What does it feel like? Unless you get a very, very, very incredibly accurate body composition read and scan, you're not gonna know what your maintenance is. Not to mention, it changes all the time based on your activity level. It changes based on a lot going on in your life. So you have to sort of be comfortable not knowing fully what your exact maintenance is. And you have to be comfortable working up to it slowly. The best way that I've found is number one, keeping track of your body weight as you do this. Of course, as you first start the reverse diet and increasing your calories, your weight's gonna go up because you're gonna have more food in your stomach. Odds are you're gonna be eating more carbs. So initially you'll see a little spike. So usually I've seen between week one and week three, slight increase in weight. After week three, if you're still in a deficit, it'll start to go down again because you're in a deficit. Remember that, you're still losing fat. Then once you start to reach maintenance and above, your weight's gonna come back up. Your weight will start to increase again because you're at maintenance and it will fluctuate between a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Maintenance is generally, you find a stable weight and it'll fluctuate anywhere between like three to five pounds up or down. Again, if you jump straight from here to here, it's gonna happen way faster and that can play with you psychologically. But if you do it slowly, it'll be much more progressive and you'll see a much more clear pattern with your weight so you'll better understand it. Use your clothes. If your clothes are not able to fit, if you jumped way too fast into it, it's a good sign that you increase calories too quickly. Use your clothes as a guide. Use the mirror in your pictures as a guide. Use measurements as a guide. Use the scale as a guide. It's all a guide. It's not a definitive yes or no, right or wrong, good or bad. It's just a guide along the way. And once you get to a point in which your weight is fluctuating within three to five pounds of each other, that's about when you're at maintenance. And that's why it's so important to do this so progressively because if you do it like that, you don't have as much data to go with and you won't know where your weight lies. Dudley Dursley, remember, Muggles can do it too. Dudley Dursley wanted to know what macros should you emphasize as you increase your calories? Because you're eating more food. So should it come from more protein? Should it come from more carbs? Should it come from more fats? Does it matter? What I wanna first say is this. I did an entire video explaining how to find out what your macros should be for fat loss. 
linked in the description. Go watch that if you haven't already. What macros should you be emphasizing? Now, here's what I think. Guarantee there will be Dementors and Death Eaters in the comment section who will be like, you don't know what the f you're talking about. Okay, cool, that's fine. I'm just gonna give you from my experience. Take it or leave it. If you're eating enough protein here during your fat loss phase, you don't need to increase it when you go, when you actually increase your calories. You don't need to. The most important time to have high protein is when you're eating very few calories so that you can spare your muscles. That's what's important. I've found that as you increase your calories, it's most important to get it from carbohydrates for a number of reasons. Number one, who the f doesn't love carbs? Let's be honest, Dumbledore crushed carbs when he was around. Hagrid lives off carbs. Carbs are the most magical macronutrient ever. Also, they have a higher thermic effect of food than fat and blah, 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 science, 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 nah, nah, nah. Okay, whatever. Point being, carbs, they're gonna give you more energy, they're gonna increase your thermic effect, they're gonna help you move more, increase your mood. It doesn't mean avoid fats doesn't mean you can't add fats. Remember, as long as you're in a calorie deficit, you'll still lose fat either way. I just know from my personal experience with myself, inner circle members, clients, people tend to feel better and progress better along the reverse diet, emphasizing carbohydrates. Now, before we wrap up, the Quidditch World Cup. If you made it this far, I wanna take you to the Quidditch World Cup. Now, I don't have tickets and I would love to see Victor Crumb play, but I just don't think that's gonna happen. What I can do is I can offer three people a free month in the inner circle. So if you made it this far, do me a favor, like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and comment below, tell me what your absolute all time favorite carb is. And if you say you're keto, kidding, I have nothing wrong with keto, it's fine. But tell me what your favorite carb food is. I don't care, pizza, pasta, bread, I don't care, pumpkin pasties, chocolate frogs, whatever your favorite carb is. Tell me in the comment section and I will pick three people to win a free month in the Science Fitness Inner Circle. With that being said, you absolutely wondrous little witch or wizard. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you found this helpful. Any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next year at Hogwarts.